Traeger, Kyle Brandt, and Sean O'Hara. Top of the morning to y'all. Yep. I love, I love the Kit Kats the all week long. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, the, the caloric it's, intake. They right heard that you were in that chair this week, and the Kit Kat folks from their corporate office in Kit Kat, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. called Kit up Kat. and were like, right. we are going to have to sponsor the show. Sean O'Hara is in town That's today. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. It. Now, now we need to wash it down with something. You got it's, any water? <laughs> yeah, it's good. I spilled, I spilled last hour. Hello. Somebody said it smelled like something that wasn't water. Hmm. It's weird. I don't know. Mm. That wasn't me that said that. Oh, you got gimlet in there, Peter? You're gimlet uh, guy. It's Cheech and Chong. Smoke. <laughs> Cheech and Chong, no. The lead <laughs> luck. <laughs> Let's do it. The Raiders and Rams held joint practices yesterday ahead of their game. They play Saturday night right here on NFL Network. We've got that quadruple header on Saturday football all day. Take a look at Matthew Stafford hitting Cooper Cup on a deep ball down the sidelines. Kyle, pretty nice? It's absolutely beautiful. Oof. And of course, I'm talking about the deep valley of Los Angeles. Where they're playing. I heard there was some, some action in this scrimmage. And I mean, good kinds, bad kind, Jalen Ramsey's everywhere. This is a lot of live reporting coming from the likes of Omar Ruiz and Siciliano. So a lot to unwrap here. We love to see it. Not to be outdone. Here's Derek Carr. Okay. Sean, what do you Whoa. think? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Sean, what do you think of that dime Number to Darren one, Waller? That is a laser. Wow, right there. Look at that throw. Darren Waller catches the back half of this football right here. That yeah. ball's by him already. Well, what happened was Foster, you know, he heard about the Foster Marola. Foster Marola. Yes. Yeah, like, I better. He heard, he heard footsteps. They're coming for your job. Yeah. Peter put you on that <laughs> island and Dr. Moreau. That's a heck of a throw right there. <laughs> the catch is great, but that throw. Yeah, that was a good throw. We love these highlights. More to come from preseason action. Of course, both those teams will be filling their new stadiums with fans this season. There is so much hype. Even Super Bowl talk about the Rams particularly, but you're not getting that same vibe out of Vegas. No, no, no. So let's size up this team a little bit. Let's talk a little West Coast. Let's talk a little Las Vegas Raiders here. How do they stack up Triggs when you look at the landscape of the AFC? Well, we talked the AFC so much and it's like, there's like the big but the big dogs right now, and it's the Chiefs, and it's the Bills, and it's the Browns, and it's the Ravens, and it's the Steelers, and it's almost like the Titans are in there, and the Colts when Wentz is going to be held. And you have that, and then you've got these other teams that are like on the outside looking in, and it's like, could they be good? Could the Chargers be good? Yeah, could the, I don't know, the Denver. Dolphins, maybe, Denver, maybe. And there's the Raiders, and you're like, the Raiders are really good on paper, but how am I in good conscience going to get on with the Raiders with the same coaching staff, the same quarterback, mm -hmm. and the same deal every year when they start off 6-3 and three and then 6-4 and four and then they just lose mm -hmm. a bunch of games? They have to address the defense. They were a sieve last year down the season, at the end of the season, and they did. I like this. Look at the Raiders' defensive additions. Okay. They bring in some actual veteran playmakers here in Yannick Ngakwe, who's going to team up with Max Crosby, and they're going to crash the edge. Wow, Solomon. Solomon Thomas comes in, a very quiet member. Solomon Thomas was the third overall pick in the NFL draft. He slides into that defensive line. Yeah. Casey Hayward, very good for okay, many well. years with the Chargers. Mm -hmm. And they, they drafted Morig the safety, and then Carl Joseph, who used to be a Raider, comes mm -hmm. back. Like, they've got guys, and they need to, because the turnover differential since Gruden's gotten there is atrocious. These are really bad numbers. You, you win with being efficient, you win with, with red zone, and you win by not losing the turnover battle. They were tied for 30th in the league, a negative 11 turnover ratio. So take care of the ball, add defensive players. They did everything right in the offseason. Okay. Okay? They did everything right on defense. You might have some questions on offense, and we're going to see how that goes. Foster Moreau can't do it all. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that they did what they had to do in the offseason. Mayock got them the players at the very least to say, hey, there's some veterans who are going to do this at the best of their ability. It's time. Like, Gruden one year, all right. Gruden two years, okay. Mm -hmm. Gruden mm -hmm. three years, what? It's, it's year four. Like, it's time. Let's go. And Mayock, year three. Like, let's go. Raiders fans are opening a beautiful palace down there. Mm -hmm. There is so much excitement from the silver and black. Derek Carr, John Gruden, Mike Mayock, mm -hmm. all those guys know what time it is. They mm -hmm. are no secret to this. It is time, and that defense needs to do their mm -hmm. end of the bargain. Too. How about it's year three of this guy, year four? How about year eight of Derek Carr? The Raiders suffer from um, good quarterback syndrome. What I mean is Carr is good. He, he's actually sometimes really good. It's like I like when you showed that throw before we came into this segment because sometimes he's really good. He's just not great. And sometimes teams that get stuck in this purgatory of having a good quarterback, you would never want to let him go because he's too good, but I don't think he's good enough to get it done in the end. Like it's, Andy Dalton had that for a long time. It was good quarterback syndrome for the Bengals. Uh, we just saw the Niners go through it and they made some changes. It's like, um, 
Derek Carr is like the NCIS of quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? It's like NCIS, this show, has gone on for years. It rates well. Okay, 18 seasons of NCIS. I looked this up. 18. 400 episodes. People watch it. People like it. It's entertaining. It's Mark Harmon. (laughs) But it's just sort of there. I personally have never met anyone who's seen one of the 400 episodes. It works. Don't, no disrespect. It totally, but you also look at it this way. What kind of show do we want? What kind of quarterback do we want? Over 400 episodes, NCIS has three Emmy nominations, and one of them is for uh, Best Guest Star Performer, so it wasn't even one of their own. They didn't win. We got two (laughs) Emmy nominations in five seasons. Now, I'm not saying we're God's gift or anything. What I'm saying is there is a sense that Derek Carr of, it just sort of works. He's not bad enough for us to break down the thing and start over, but he's also not good enough for us to win the AFC. He's never never started a playoff game. A playoff game, not even a little measly wild card game. But I think that the, the whole industry is changing. And if you look what San Francisco did, they said we're not going to be in good quarterback syndrome. Screw it. We're going to go nuclear and completely blow this thing up and spend everything to draft a new quarterback, even though we have a Derek Carr mm-hmm. here. Jimmy's good. I don't know where that leaves the Raiders because I don't think Derek Carr is great enough to win AFC playoff games. The, I don't. The Jets had Sam Darnold and were like, that's not good enough. Out of here. Eight years. And Out of the, here. But the, you know, the Derek Carr supporters will say the stats are great. They always do. Loved, and it's like, Listen, the Lions supporters said that for Matt Stafford for years. The Lions finally over it. The Vikings supporters say that for Kirk Cousins now. And he plays really well. He's good. Good quarterback syndrome is a dangerous thing in this time and age. I, I, I'm telling you. And the Raiders are in it. They're an interesting team because you, you look at Derek Carr, and that's obviously where it starts. And, and you think, man, this guy, I, I mean, on and off, hot and cold. And he, he had his best year a couple of years ago, and then he got hurt. And I love that you brought the CSI into it. I was a criminal justice major. So Mm -hmm. allow me to present Exhibit A right now on Derek Carr. These are his stats from last year. He's coming off a career year, and yet we still don't know what the Raiders are. We still don't know yet what Derek Carr is. I mean, look at all the the ones up there. Career season last year, over 20 yard completions first. Passer rating, best year ever. Passing yards, all that. And yet the Raiders and John Gruden and Mike Mayock completely morphed the offense around him. They said, we're going to trade away three of our starting offensive linemen. You didn't like Jackson, Rodney Hudson, Trent Brown. We're going to get rid of This guy's coming off your career year. You should be building things around him and saying, look, we got to lock these guys in. This is our – it's go time right now. And yet they made all these moves. And then they drafted Alex Leatherwood uh, Leatherwood with the first-round Controversial pick pick this year. And, you know, I was listening to uh, the Sirius Radio interview with John Gruden, and he was talking about, man, we put a lot on Derek Carr's plate. We ask him to do a ton, especially the line of scrimmage, and he's great with it. He can handle it all. Look, John Gruden is known for for having this extreme language and verbal offense where there's a lot of formations and words and all this stuff, and Derek Carr's handled it all. And he said he's phenomenal at the Mm -hmm. line of scrimmage. You know what the hardest thing to do as a young offensive lineman is when a quarterback changes things at the line of scrimmage. And all of a sudden, now it's like, oh, my gosh. All right, he just changed the play. What's the defense? What are we doing? Everybody's talking. Oh, and then he goes, hurry, hurry, hurry. Now here comes the ball. So you've got a center right now who has one career start in front of you. So if you're going to be that offense and if Derek Carr is going to be that guy and you got to do with the line of scrimmage, uh, the, the guys up front are going to re- really have to step up, especially yeah. if you change things. At His the best year, what was it, 2016? Yeah. It was the Kaleche Osemele. It was no, a Velveeta block. He could do anything behind. The defensive line mm. was great. I agree with everything you're saying. I don't agree that we don't know what this team is. They are a middle-of-the-pack team in the AFC. I don't care about those numbers from Derek Carr. And I think it's interesting you say he's good. The whole team is good. We need some of these draft picks, some of them controversial, more than one of them are, to sort of bring it and do something. I got dragged yesterday for not having Josh Jacobs in my top 12 in fantasy mm-hmm. running backs. But Josh Jacobs, he's been good. He hasn't been great. He averaged less than four yards per carry last year. He didn't do much in the passing game. You don't draft a running back in the first round that, so they're not great. The entire team is good. Is there anything you can think that would make them great or make them be able to contend? Because they're it's exactly what it is. They're a good middle-of-the-back mm-hmm. team right now. I think probably what Peter's talking about, just adding some more guys yeah. who are difference makers. Look, they, they had they had maybe they had the best defensive player in the yeah, league Cleo and they Mack. traded him. They got rid of him. Yeah. And now maybe they have the best tight end and they're adding a few guys. I just it, it, we, we can't get this far into the segment without without harping more on Mahomes. Like, they have to do it. They, it's always about Mahomes. Their offense is really fun in that you have these two guys, Edwards and Ruggs, on the outside. Edwards, yeah. no one knows about. Brian Edwards is going to be very good this year. Two young receivers. And then you got these two tight ends in Waller and Moreau. And then you got Jacobs and Kenyon Drake in the back. So there's all these players and Renfro mm-hmm. running across the middle. But to Sean's point, you have a question mark on offensive line. And to your point, as great as the stats are, 
Do you have the confidence that Carr, besides a Week Five win last year yeah. in Arrowhead, is going to get those? That's big why hands? it's complicated. It's it's never the Derek 